What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about something a little different. So we all know the Crucible. We just had this amazing event in the Crucible and I was starting to think to myself what iteration of content should be made into Crucible content? Should it be Act 6, Act 8, a variant? I was going back and forth thinking to myself what I would want to see, what I would want to see as the next iteration of Crucible content, and I came to the conclusion that Labyrinth of Legends would be the perfect way to introduce a sequel to Crucible content. Now let me explain my ideas around this. I have four key points, but I would honestly love to hear your thoughts about this concept, what you would change, what you would add stuff like that. Like first and foremost, I know I don't have any mention of an enrage timer here, but I think a crucible labyrinth enrage should exist. I think the original labyrinth enrage should kind of be changed and then there should be a crucible labyrinth of legends enrage and I would love to hear your thoughts about what that should be. So comment them down below. I'd love to hear them. But I have four main ideas for this labyrinth of legends crucible. I think the health pools all being the same is a great starting ground. Aside from Maestro, like I said, I think around 2.7 million health is a very fair amount of health for Everest content turned into Crucible content, and there are a lot of champions that can work for this level of health pool. It gives them a chance to shine. I think it just makes a lot of sense. The next thing that I would want to see, like I said, the Labyrinth and Rage is removed, but the damage cap is still present, and then I think there should be an additional Enrage timer, something similar but not exactly the same, like no evade that can't be countered by basically anything. I think that's a little silly. There should be some sort of Enrage, so I'm kind of throwing the ball into your court for that. I would love to hear your thoughts about what that would look like. I think the third thing will be the most divisive thing that I talk about in this video. A new elimination choice node. So, if you remember with the first iteration of the Crucible, the elimination choice node just swapped out the current character that you were using for a character that you have not used. You could use the same champion in different rarities, you just could not use the same champion two times. So, your roster was essentially wide open for you. With this Crucible concept, I would like to change that. I'd like to narrow the gap a little bit. I think a great way to step up the skill requirement and the roster check will be to not allow duplicate rarities of champions. So, for example, if you're the type of person who has a 7-star Onslaught and a 6-star Onslaught, you can only use one of them, and then you can't use Onslaught again for the rest of the quest. I think this is a fair ask given what the content is, it's Everest content, and you will be incentivized to rank champions of various class and ability to deal with Everest content in different ways. I think doubling up on Everest champions just wouldn't be very fun, so focusing on characters that individually shine would be fantastic, and I think it would be way more fun, way more interesting to plan when you can't use any duplicate champions. And then the fourth and final idea suggestion would be two technically, uh, but we're going to make it into one. You divide the quest into two paths, each with 21 fights, and then Maestro with 5 million health at the end, bumping him up from the 3.3 that he currently has. Or you make it four paths of 10, and then you have a super hard path with three fights, and then you have Maestro. So, I believe in the Labyrinth of Legends, it's 43 fights, and 21 paths, or 21 fights would be 21, 42, and then Maestro is 43. So, I think that one makes the most sense, divided into two paths, you have 21 Everest champions that you can use. I think that's plenty. I think the health pool being that high makes it make sense. I also think, I did not add this to the document, but I might put it on the text screen. I think that the champions in Labyrinth of Legends that have no base abilities should all get the Abyss class specific character abilities. I think that would up the ante of the challenge pretty significantly 
and it would make it for a lot more daunting of an Everest piece of content. If you have a different idea for the base characters in Labyrinth for what kind of abilities they should gain, please let me know in the comments down below. Again, kind of an open book with this thing. And then we have the rewards. Now, this is technically like a two-part video because the second part of this video cruxes on the first part. So I will say that the rewards for this, they could be very good. Now let's talk about the rewards. So like I mentioned, this is kind of a two-part video where part one is the concept and then part two cruxes on you watching part one because I will be talking about my idea for a buff to Labyrinth Ultron. I think one of the best chase prizes in the game going forward could be a revamped version of Labyrinth of Legends Ultron. We've only ever had him as a 5-star character, and I think a Crucible Labyrinth of Legends would be the perfect way to reintroduce Labyrinth Ultron as a not like defining meta-relevant character, but a very fun, useful attacker that you could toss on defense and it could get a little annoying sometimes, a little, little dual threat action, but just a very fun and useful tech attacker that people would want to chase and rank up as a 7-star. So you'll see the kit in the video that I make probably on Wednesday, because by the time you're watching this, it should be Tuesday, September 3rd. So, let's talk about the rewards. Completion. I say 6-star buffed Labyrinth Ultron. 4 to 5 Labtron rank up gem, a 1 to 2 7 star rank up gem, 2 7 star class selectors, and 10,000 titan shards. I think this is a fair ask for what is essentially an alteration of the Necropolis. It's not exactly Necropolis, it's like the love child of Labyrinth and Abyss with more moderate health pools but l more restrictive roster asks. I think this is a fair ask for rewards. I think people who just want to do the completion of this to get Labyrinth Ultron, get him up to rank 5, would be thrilled. And I think once you see the kit that I've kind of crafted, you will be very happy to get a 6-star Labtron. So this is what I think for completion. And then exploration, kind of following the Necropolis theme, you would get a 7-star buffed Labyrinth Ultron, a 1-2 to two Labtron rank up gem. So not only would you get Labtron, but you would get and get him to rank 2. Basically, you know, all expenses paid. You know, you know, you get the specific rank up gem for him. Another two to three seven star rank up gem. I think that would sh that should be sort of the norm with Crucible content going forward. I feel that is a very accessible way for rank threes and a very challenging but fair way to expand the roster of Paragon players and potentially more Valiant players like myself. A seven star class Nexus Crystal. Now, I don't think we've seen this before. I know we've seen 7-star Nexus Crystals, and I believe we may have seen one 7-star Mutant Nexus Crystal in a Deadpool sale that kind of happened in July when the movie came out. But since then, we have not seen any class Nexus. I think this would be a great opportunity to introduce a 7-star class Nexus Crystal. You give a little more autonomy to the player in choosing the class, and then you give them three options instead of just a random crystal. And then 20,000 Titan Shards, bringing the total to a Titan and a half. This might be too much. This might be too much of an ask for Titan Shards. I would consider maybe cutting the Exploration Titan Shards in half, so instead of it being one and a half, it's just one. I think that would make sense. I could also see, like, the class crystal in completion just being one, and then everything else staying the same. I think maybe... Excluding those changes, this seems realistic and reasonable, and I think people would enjoy this for the challenge that would be set. And then, this is optional. I'm not saying this is a necessary thing, but I would love to see this. You could release an objective to 100% explore the Labyrinth Crucible within two weeks for dupes on both the 6-star and the 7-star Labtron. I think that would be a great incentive, just the one dupe. Again, if Labtron, again, there's a lot of logical leaps here, but just kind of roll with me for a little bit. If Labtron does get buffed and it's something similar to the kit that I've designed for him, that I've kind of envisioned for him, no pun intended, he would want to be awakened, but he wouldn't need it. So if this wasn't in a thing that existed, it would be perfectly fine, and the 7 star would still be nearly as powerful without the dupe. And you could just get the dupe down the line somewhere, I guess. But yeah, I think this 
would be an amazing concept for a second Crucible. Please let me know if you think a Labyrinth of Legends Crucible is something you would want to see, and give me some feedback on how you would design it, how you would want to see a Labyrinth Crucible in the game, probably like in 2025. I would hope we get another Crucible by then, maybe even two. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you have not already, and hit the bell for notifications. I go live on a weekly basis, and I upload basically every day, so you don't want to miss out. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you the next one.